same handout if you didn't bring it. I have copies over there. If you didn't bring it. I corrected the mistake that I didn't print out a new copy. The zero number, paragraph one, with the preamp, that should be two diamonds, two hearts, and two spades, not two clubs. Two clubs is a strong opening, and we're going to talk about that next week. So what I'd like to do tonight is do a real quick review of what we discussed last night. Then I want to focus more on the responses of the person who responded to the two week two bids because we did we just went over that pretty quickly. And then we'll talk a little bit about opening three of us two to four of us two. My goal is that to get is to get through this pretty quickly because I have two extra hands that if we have time we can play. So we play six hands instead of four if we get through this. Okay? Alright. So just to review, what is a preempt? A preempt is a weak bid that you use when you have a long suit, at least six cards, and you have a, only five to ten points, sometimes eleven. If you have twelve points, including your length, you should open one of a suit, not two, three, or four. Okay, so the prerequisites are you should have a weak hand, and you should have at least six cards in some suit. And the suit should be relatively good. You don't have to have two of the top three honors, but you have to, it should be a solid suit, not nine, eight, seven, six, three, two, or something like that, generally. Um, one other thing that I'm going to point out on week twos and the other preemptive bids, particularly on the week twos, if you go on the web and you read one person's column and another person's column, these point counts are going to vary. Uh, some of the responses particularly are going to vary. I'm, I'm sharing with you primarily what I use, and I've got most of my information from Larry Cohen and a couple other people like that. All right? And I find that it works very, very well. Uh, but once again, you're free to go on the web and there's variations, particularly of the responses, not so much of the openings, all right? All right, so once again, these are the prerequisites. So with six cards, exactly six cards, you can open two diamonds, two hearts, or two spades. If you have an opening hand to open more points, don't open two, open one. If you have seven of a suit, you open three of that suit. If you have eight of that suit, you open four of that suit, okay? You can also employ the preamps as an overcall. So if your right-hand opponent bids one diamond and you jump into the next suit, like if you bid two spades over one diamond, that's the same as if you had opened two spades. It's essentially a weak two overcall. If you what, you know, what if they bid uh, one spade and you bid uh, three diamonds? Do you have to have seven? You should probably them? have seven to do that, yes. And so it's not, I can't... You can't really do a week two over that. I assume yeah. it's six just because it went. Now, I would, I would usually have seven before I do that. Okay? If you've been at the three level, I would want to have seven cards. Okay, so you can make a jump over call and it has the same effect. So everyone understands this portion of it pretty solidly. I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about responses. And here's where it gets a little more negative. <coughs> The one, one of the main values of a preemptive bid is it allows you to describe your hand fully to your partner. In virtually every case, and we'll talk about the exceptions, once you've made a preemptive bid, you're done. There's no reason for you to bid again. Your partner knows very precisely in most instances what you have. And so any bid that your partner makes, with a couple of exceptions that we'll get to, you should simply pass. All right? But if you are the responding person and your partner opens a week two bid, let's focus on week two bids right now, we know a couple of things. First of all, what's the most points your partner can have? Ten. Ten. So how many points do you have to have any chance of getting? Fifteen. Fifteen, right? Okay, so if you don't have at least fifteen points, unless you have some support, there's no reason to bid. In fact, you shouldn't bid. You should simply pass. So if you have 14 or less points and no support, support being three cards, so we're defining it here, you should pass. Okay? Now, if you do have support, you can further what's called further the preempt. And we talked about this a little bit last week. Here's, here's a, a little exercise that will help you in this. So if your partner has between five and ten, so let's put them in the middle, let's say they have eight points. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you've got. Nine. Okay, I'll, I'll get away. So your partner has eight and you have nine. That's 17. How many do the, your, your opponents have? So they're close to game. So the higher number of points you have opposite your partner's <coughs> week two bid, the more unlikely it is that your opponents will be in game. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So 
The weaker your hand here is, the more likely it is, the weaker your hand is as the responder, the more likely it is your opponents are going to be in game. And so you want to do all you can to muddy the waters. So, if you do have support of your partner's weak two-bit suit, three cards or more, and you have a weak hand. Definition. Definition, my definition, this is one of the nebulous ones where everybody has a different definition. To me, a weak hand should probably be zero to seven points because once you get up into the eight, nine, ten point range, it's less likely that your opponents will have game. Okay? So you want to extend the preamp when it's unlikely, when it's likely your opponents will have game. You want to mess them up. Okay? All right, so let's say zero to seven points is the weak hand. So you extend the preamp. So with three cards of the suit your partner bid, you simply bid three. If you have four cards, you bid four. That's the law of total tricks, which we talked about last week. In other words, you can generally make or bid to the level of the total number of trumps you have in your hand. So if you have three and your partner has six, you have nine between you, so you can bid to the three level. If you've got four and your partner has six, You've got 10, so you can bid to the four level. You may go down, but you're, you've got a good chance to come in pretty close to making that. And that's when the sacrifice bids that we talked about come into play. All right, so those two are pretty straightforward. Now here's the one that requires the most discussion, and that's, that's, called, that's bidding two no trump. So if your partner opens a weak two bid, and you as the responder bid two no trump, that is a forcing bid one round. That is, that is one of the two instances where you as the weak two opener cannot pass. You must bid something. And specifically what this bid is, it's, a, it's asking for a feature. And a feature is defined as an outside ace or a king. So you're the weak two bidder. If you have a, an ace or a king in some suit other than your six card suit, you would bid it here. Okay? And there's a couple of other caveats which I'll go into in just a second. But you need a good hand to do this. You've got to have some, at least, decent chance to make game. Okay. Once again. Now, do you have to have, still have like three plus cards in the... No, suit? you don't necessarily have to. It's probably good to have at least two to where you might end up in the game in that suit. Your partner has six. If you have two, you have eight. So you still have a fifth. I probably wouldn't do this with one unless my hand's really strong. Would it be okay. balanced if you only had one? Does that matter? If you only have one, there's an outside chance you can make no trump All right? All right, so I like to say that you should have at least 15, 16 plus points. Once again, depending on whose articles you read, this point range is going to change, all right? But obviously, you need at least 15, or there's no point in doing anything, all right? Because the most you're part of have is 10. So maybe 16, 17 is a better range. But you can do it if you have a lot of strength in the outside suits with 15 or so points that ask for a feature. Now, you're saying that, but what if the partner was void? Your old, the opener bid that week two was void, and so <coughs> well, you can't count that for his No, okay, points. let's, let's talk so about... Suddenly he'll have 13 points. Okay, let's talk about once the responder has bid two no trump, what the opener does, okay? And it's on... Number three. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's number, it's, it's on the second page, rebids by week two opener, number two. Okay? All right, now, let's think about this for a second. I don't have much room on this board. Let me erase this because we, we have this. I was told if you bid a, a week two, you were supposed to shut up and not do anything else. You are in every instance but the two Except. that I'm going to tell you about right now. Okay. All right. All right. So if you bid a week two, and now your partner, you bid a week two, you've got five to ten minutes. Now I'm your partner. I'm sitting here with 17 points. Okay. So we still have a chance for game, right? If you have the higher end of that. Does everyone understand that? So it's it makes sense for me to bid something, doesn't it? Okay. So if, let's say I don't have strong support for your suit, and I, and therefore I probably just bid your suit, okay? But if I don't have strong support for your suit, I make a bid of two no trump. And 
that is a conventional bid. A conventional bid means that it has nothing to do necessarily with no trumpets. So you ask you a question. It's a conventional bid. Right. Is it? And the question is? The question is, partner, first of all, do you have a weak hand or a strong hand based upon your, your two bid? A weak hand would be defined as five to seven points. A strong hand would be eight to the ten or eleven. Okay? It's, that's the first question it's asking. If the answer is no to the first question, you simply rebid your suit. Okay? Rebidding your suit is the weakest bid you can make in response to Tudor Trump. That says, partner, I've got six cards, I've got no more than seven points. If that's good enough for you, go for it. If not, stop. All right? However, if you have the high end, if you're in the 8 to 10 range, and you have a feature, and what's a feature? Inserting <laughs> <laughs> an outside suit. All right? You bid that suit. So uh, let's say you open two diamonds, and you also happen to have the king of hearts. And your partner bids two no trump. You've got a maximum to point count. We'll go over some exercises here. You would bid three hearts. And that bid says, partner, I've either got, either got the ace or the king of hearts, and I have at least eight points. Okay? Now, what happens if you have eight to ten points? You don't have, you have eight to ten points and you don't have a feature. Three no. Now what do you do? Three no. Well, if you really have a strong trump suit, and that's defined as having an ace, king, queen, the ace, queen, jack, the ace, king, jack, you can bid three no trump. If you don't have a strong trump suit, you just go back and through it and bid your suit again. Okay? Now, it's a lot to digest, but we'll go over that here. Okay? Well, if you have six or seven in one suit, that means that you're short in other suits. Of course. Eight, specifically. And you can have a feature and a void. That's okay. Oh, that would be okay. Sure. If you, you, can, oh, you can open... You can open a, a week two with a void. So let's say you have this thing. Ace, Queen, Jack, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I mean, that's nine. That's two different points. Yeah. Ace, Jack. And so it's six, nine. So you've got 7, 8, mm -hmm. 9, 10. So that's a maximum hand, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to avoid it. <coughs> okay, the bidding goes two spades. Your partner bids two no trump. You've got a hand in this range, and you've got a feature. Mm -hmm. You bid three hearts. Okay? Because you're telling him what? You're telling him, what I have the ace and or king of hearts, and I have at least eight points. Okay. That's what you're telling him about that. Yes. If you had only the king of hearts and the other two littles were someplace else. These? Yeah, would you You'd still, still do that? Sure. Okay. It's a little riskier, but yeah. Okay. You're just telling him where your features are. Yeah. And then he'll use that information to decide if he wants to go further. Okay, a couple more. Let's still dwell on this block because it doesn't go up, doesn't yes. happen that much. You have a really, really good hand. I'm sitting here with 18 points, but I have no support in your suit. I have one card in your suit. If you've got a really strong hand, you can bid uh, your good five card plus suit. Oh. If you have to bid at the three level, you should have six cards. And we'll have an example here. Okay? Or you can bid game in your suit, in your partner's suit, if you think you can make it. If you have 15, 16, 17 points, and you've got some good cards in the outside suits, just a big game, there's a good chance you'll make game in that. Okay? Well, once again, we'll go over examples. And right, I think you'll understand this more clearly when we go over the example. And, and number five, you don't necessarily have to have three. You have well, three. You, uh, here, here you can bid a game with two. Okay. Okay? And, you know, a riskier bid would be three no trial if you've got stoppers in all the suits and a couple of cards in the suit to where you can get back a couple of times. Because think about it, the week two bidder probably doesn't have any outside entries, or very few. So unless you have at least two of, of that suit, you're only going to be able to get to his hand one time. Okay? 
All right, so let's look at some examples. All right, in this instance, your partner opens two hearts, both are vulnerable. Everybody else passes, it's around to you. What do you bid with this hand? Yeah. Right, you've got a, you've got under 14 points, no support. and you have no hearts, no. so you pass, and the weak two bidder passes as well. Okay, there's no under, I can't imagine a situation where the weak two bidder would bid again. Okay. How about here? You've got five, six points in support of hearts. And you still bid, he bid hearts. He bid hearts. two hearts. Um, That's your turn. Three hearts. Yeah, you bid three hearts. You extend the premium. Mm -hmm. Okay? How about here? Again? Well, you've got, you've got six, seven, ten, fifteen points, four hearts, and see what you did with the king and the queen? So I think I'm going to bid four hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Yeah. I'll bid so four you, hearts and take my chances. So you don't have to ask for outside features? Well, there's no reason to. I mean, you yeah. mostly have one loser there. Odds are really good. He has the ace of hearts. You know, you're, you're probably going to make four hearts with that, barring some bad luck. So the four hearts, you know, 99 percent of the time that's going to be a great move. How about here? Ooh. Yeah, you'll get three diamonds. Yeah. You're six better than your partner's six, yeah. for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, so just it. take him out of that one and put, put him into yours. And that will be passed. Okay? Although, uh, you need to have a, a discussion between the two of you if a new suit bid by your partner is forcing. There's, there's a lot of, you know, different, different views on that. I think probably uh, forcing one round is a good idea. All right? All right, so everyone see that? Okay. Now it goes. You open two spades, pass, your partner gets two no trump. Okay? okay? This is your hand. Okay, the first thing you do after a two no trump bid is determine is it a weak, weak, a weak, weak two or a strong weak two? <laughs> if that makes it okay? is, is it in this point range or this point range? Okay, so that's the first thing you discuss. It's weak. Okay, so what's your bid then? Three spades. Three spades. Okay, partner, I'm weak. I may or may not have a feature. How about here? Strong. You're strong. Do you have a feature? Yes. 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 Okay. So what do you bid? Three clubs. You bid three clubs. Saying, partner, I have at least eight points and I have the king or ace of clubs. Three clubs. How about here? Strong. Uh, well, you've got, you've got a strong hand, strong, no outside, no outside but you have no outside features, so what can you bid here? You, you, can, you either have one of two bids. You, you either bid three hearts, which says, I don't, have, I don't have a feature in my hand is weak, or three no trump, which says, my hand is strong and I don't have a feature. And remember I said, you have to have a strong trump suit, which means ace, king, queen, which you obviously have here. Ace Queen Jack, Ace King Jack. Okay, that's strong enough. This one definitely is. So you would bid three no trump over two no trump there. Promising that suit and he should have the rest. Can you explain that one again? What's the well, the original so bid was two hearts, right? Two spades. No. Two spades past oh, two no trumps. Excuse trump. me. Okay. So Does everyone understand these three examples? Not the last one. Oh, okay, but in the last example, your partner, your partner, bid. Your partner you bid two spades. So this is your hand right here, and you decided to open two spades. You've got nine, ten, eleven. That's a real strong two spade open. Okay? But it's not strong enough to open one. So two spades. Real strong. Okay? Your, then it passes, and your partner doesn't pass like you figured he probably would. It's two no trouble. Which is what? It's forcing one round, and what is what is she doing? She's asking you for a feature. Right? Asking for an outside feature. Yeah. You don't have an outside feature. So you can't bid an outside feature, right? But you've got a real strong trump suit. So you can get three no trump with that. If this, if this had been weaker, if that had been this, then you go back to the, to the space. Yes. Don't you know when you have gained points? Once you went to no trump, you got 11, you got 26 no, at a minimum. Not necessarily. 
Well, if you got 11. Well, yeah, that's you why that's why you bid with this. That's why you bid with no truck. But you're weak in all, all the other free suits. But he has to have he has to have 15, 16 points to even initiate the bid. You've got nine high card points, and you'll probably win all these tricks. His points have to be somewhere. Okay. Right. So that's why you bid through no trump there. Okay. You, you oh, no, I thought you said I something see. else. <laughs> he could correct it, maybe. Yeah, he can correct it, but chances are you deny having a feature. I mean, even in this instance here where he showed the king of hearts, and I don't have the other hand up there, but I mean the king of clubs, that, that may be all he needed, you know. Maybe he has the queen and a, a little club or something. And if he knows you have a stopper in clubs, maybe that's all he needs to bid through no trouble. Or, or maybe he's going to bid for hearts or packs. You don't know, but you, you've... You fulfilled your obligation by telling him what you have. In the third example, three no trump is better than three spades. Right, because three spades in this instance is the weak bid. If you bid three spades, you're saying, A, I don't have a feature, and B, I have at most seven points. That's what that says if you bid three spades. Could you go four spades and get it into a... You could, but what if he's sitting there with, uh, you know, one or two? I, you can take a chance. Generally, the best bid here is three no trump. He can correct it to four spades okay. if he wants to. But in the other suits what? that are not spades, if, 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 this hand has no help. Okay. Mm -hmm. If the bidding has gone two spades, that's you. You just yeah, bid two spades. Yeah. Your partner bid two no trump. So he's got a lot of points. You know in your head, you've got nine that you probably have game. Plus, you can run this suit. Yeah. So you said, we need to be in game, Hard Three no trump sounds good. Okay. Now, now, if the partner's sitting there with a hand that he doesn't want to play no trump in, he can switch it back to four <coughs> spades. You're either going to be in four spades or three no trump. Yeah. Okay. Does everyone see that? I think. Yeah. Once again, and thanks for pointing this out to me. I mean, when he bid two no trumps, you're sitting here with this many points. You probably have, you probably have game, and so that in and of itself is a reason to bid three, three no trumps there. Um, and, and your partner can correct to four spades if uh, you she suggested wants. that bidding a, a two no trump would probably you would need two of the partner's suit. Well, well, it's probably better. Yeah, it's yeah. probably better because I can see a serious problem. If you didn't have, if you only had one, yeah. playing that, because he's not going to take all this space. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think you should probably have two to make this easier. Okay? But, you know, I can't account for every possible scenario. There may be a time when you may make that choice. But for a general practical rule, I think you're correct. Okay? But just remember, to bid two no trial, there's got to be some hope for gain. Or there's no point in making the bid. Okay? All of these bids below here, you're trying for gain. And so you've got to be 15, 16, 17 points. The ones up here, these are getting in the way, and this one you're just saying, okay, we're done. Okay? You're going to fall in this category about 80% of the time. At the top. Occasionally you'll pick up a hand like this one, top of it, and you'll say, oh, that's cool. You got six of those. Let's bid four. Four of them. Okay? All right. Uh, a couple quick more, and then we'll do a couple on three. I think we're going to have enough time to play our hands. Okay, so the bidding goes two diamonds. You open two diamonds. They pass. Your partner bids two no trumps. Same thing. Okay, except your diamonds now. What do you do with this hand? First, is it maximum or minimum? Minimum. Yeah. If, if it's minimum. It's minimum, and one has outside feature. Okay, but since it's minimum, you don't even show the feature. You're not going to make it. You just bid three diamonds. Okay? Here, you've got a maximum, and you have an outside feature. So over the two no trunks, you would bid three clubs, showing the feature. Partner, do you have a minimum or maximum hand? What's maximum? Do you have a feature? Yes. By the way, I have a, a club, a king or ace of clubs. How about here? So on that one, you would bid one. Say that again. The clubs. Clubs. You bid your clubs. This one. Which one were you going to do? Show the feature. Show the feature. And then he... Okay, how about, how about here? Uh, yeah, you, show the, you show the feature. You've got the maximum, you've got the maximum range, and you have a feature. 
So you would get three spades. Yes. You fulfilled your obligation. You mean you bid two diamonds? You bid two diamonds. Right, right. He bid, he, oh, this guy, well, this guy bid two okay, diamonds. Then the partner bid two no trump. You've got a maximum okay. range hand for your two diamonds. Okay. Okay. So now you should have a feature. And then what would the partner come back and bid? Well, it depends on what his hand is, but you fulfilled your obligation. You answered the question. Okay. Okay? You so probably the, won't bid again. On the first hand, your guys are saying minimum, but you count the points with the four, five, four, six, seven, seven eight. eight. That it's okay. Is, if, if you want to count it that way, that's okay. So okay. you can make so it go either way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're probably right. But if your feature was a single king, it's not a good it, well, that's what we talked about. I think you brought it up a minute ago. If it's a singleton king, there's some risk. You probably need to decide with your partner what you're going to do if it's a singleton. Singleton A, you're going to get it. Right. Okay. Unprotected king, those are, those are empty situations. Okay, do you have some understanding now of the responses to the two-no draw? And if you have a weak hand but support, you, you continue to preempt? If you have less than 14 points, you pass. Those are the ones that are going to come up most. Okay? If you just happen to have a real strong gain or instinct, we'll probably tell you what to do as much as anything I can write on the board. Okay? All right, so let's talk briefly here on uh, bids of three. Or four, rather. So if you have a five to ten points, <coughs> 11, and a seven card suit, and the suit's decent, but it's not hitted by the ten. You can open three, or you can overcall at the three level. All right, so that's pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. Not too much to discuss there. It either is that or it isn't, okay? But, once again, the challenge comes when you're the partner. All right, the same, basically the same thing applies. Your partner's promising at most 10, 11 points. So you have to have 15, 16 in that range to really do anything. And then you even have less room than before. Okay? So if you have less 14 or less points, you pass, right? Spades, <coughs> and I open three, well, I mean three hearts, I open three hearts. What are you going to do with that? I'm going to bid four hearts, and I'm going to expect to make that. Okay? Uh, how about. Same thing. You've got 8, 11, 15, 16, 17 points, but, but you only have one heart. I mean, he's got seven hearts. You've got eight. I think I just did four hearts with that. The most important thing in, in continuing a, the, the preamp, if you're not going to stay in the suit, is cards in the outside suits. And you've got that nailed. You've got three aces in suits other than the suit he has. And you don't have to worry about entries because she's, she's got this whole string of hearts. You're going to be able to trump something at some point to get over there if you have to. And you probably won't because they're all, just, they're all going to be good cards. Okay, how about here? Wait, what, what was the... Four hearts. Four, four hearts. hearts. Four hearts. How about here? in the preempt here if you want. Okay. You can bid four hearts. Now think about this. They probably have spades, don't you think? Good yeah. chance. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So if you don't bid, if you don't extend it to, and you know the first person's passed, so the partner hasn't bid yet. So this person here has all the points. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Your partner opened three hearts. At most she has his ten. This person passed. Doesn't have an opening in or even anything to overcall. You're sitting here with this. 
at seven, eight high card points, you know, you've got less than half of the points. All the points are residing here, or a big, a lot of them. And they're probably spades, a good chance they're spades, all right? If you pass, which most people would, because they're not thinking this through, it becomes a lot easier for this person to bid three spades, mm -hmm. okay? If you extend the preempt to four hearts, they're not, they're gonna pass. are they going to bid four spades?